cops attacked and assault, assaulted, speared with flagpole with flagpoles, sprayed with mace, stomped on, dragged, brutalized. Police lost their lives as a result of that day. Police lost their lives. One of the officers said it was worse than anything he had experienced in war in Iraq. So let me say this to my MAGA Republican friends in Congress. Don't tell me you support law enforcement if you won't condemn what happened on the 6th. Don't tell me. Can't do it. For God's sake, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Look. You're either on the side of a mob or the side of the police. You can't be pro-law enforcement and pro-insurrection. You can't be a party of law and order and call the people who attacked the police on January 6th patriots. You can't do it. What are we teaching our children? It's just that simple. And now it's sickening to see the new attacks on the FBI, threatening the life of law enforcement agents and their families for simply carrying out the law and doing their job. Look, I want to say this as clear as I can. There's no place in this country, no place, for endangering the lives of law enforcement. No place. None, never, period. If you were wondering why Republicans are so hell-bent on trying to sell this narrative of Sleepy Joe, it's to distract from the fact that this is what Biden is actually like. And I could dive into the hypocrisy of their attempts to trash Biden while also elevating a candidate like Herschel Walker, but I won't. Instead, I'll just show this clip of Herschel Walker and challenge you to make sense of exactly what he said. Herschel Walker is still standing. My bike is not bent, so anyone can ride my bike like he's seen to have Chuck Schumer and uh, Joe Biden riding this bike because he seemed to be voting for whatever they say. Any guesses? No? Me neither. But going back to Biden, he brings up the crucial point here, the point that not a single Republican has bothered to acknowledge. For years, they've hid behind this idea of being pro-police, and doing so fit neatly into their whole worldview. First, scare the older white base into being afraid of brown people, black people, Muslims, Jews, millennials, Gen Zs, pretend that American cities are wastelands and that anyone who doesn't look like you is trying to sell your kids drugs and rape your wives. And so naturally, it's not a stretch that support for the police is a natural extension of that. That's that's been their neat little formula for years. The problem now is that it's come time to actually support law enforcement in practice as opposed to just parroting little talking points. This is the first time that their pro-police stance has actually been challenged in real life. And clearly, the fact that they sat idly by and watched as their own supporters bludgeoned the police and even went to the FBI building in Cincinnati with an AR-15 and couldn't be bothered to mount anything close to a condemnation goes to show that not only are they not supportive of law enforcement, but they actually never were. It was always nothing more than a talking point to give the impression that they were this pro-law and order party. It was a convenient little talking point that added to their brand of patriotism, but let's be crystal clear, there is nothing patriotic about the Republican Party. Right now we're watching as the entire GOP rallies around a former president who incited an insurrection at the U.S. Capitol to overturn a free and fair election because he couldn't stomach the idea of being the loser that he is. They're rallying around the guy who stole classified documents after the better part of a decade having fainting spells when Hillary Clinton mishandled a fraction fraction of what Trump was found with at his little beach resort. They're rallying around the guy who bilked his supporters for hundreds of millions of dollars so that he can have enough cash to defend himself in court for having committed very real crimes. They're rallying around the guy whose sole priority is himself and his ego. That is what the GOP has become. It is a cult of personality that revolves around a megalomaniacal narcissist who thinks the sun rises and sets around him. So when the GOP crows about the Constitution, I'm sorry, but spare me. Their allegiance isn't to any document. It's to a reality TV host. And just to be clear, Biden should continue calling these people out. 
because for a guy like him, who has almost to a fault deferred to bipartisanship to be sounding the alarms about the danger of the Republican Party, really should be a wake-up call to all those Republican and independent voters out there about just how extreme the GOP has become. If they can hear Joe Biden, of all people, forego the usual platitudes about our friends on the right, then maybe they'll realize the extent to which that party is truly posing a threat to democracy. And by the way, that's exactly what he's been doing. Do you want to put your social security in the hands of Ted Cruz and Marjorie Taylor Greene? I mean it. But it's not just social security. Senator Scott wants everything in the federal budget voted on de novo every five years that goes out of existence. That includes Medicare, veterans benefits, and everything else. And then along comes Ron, Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. This is what they put this in writing now. This is their plan. He thinks five years is too long. I'm not joking. You think I'm making this up? He wants to put Social Security and Medicare on the chopping block every single year. You hear, you hear Republicans always talk about the deficit, right? About big spending Democrats. Well, guess what? When the last guy was president, he increased the debt by two trillion dollars in tax cuts. Not a penny of it paid for. Okay. Well, guess what we did? We reduced the deficit. The, inf the Inflation Reduction Act lowers the deficit by $300 billion over the next 10 years. And that's on top of the $350 billion I reduced the deficit last year and the $1.5 trillion reduced it this year. 2020, you and 81 million Americans voted to save our democracy. That's why Donald Trump isn't just a former president. He is a defeated former president. And it's not hyperbole. Now you need to vote to literally save democracy again. My friends, we offer a starkly different version and vision of this country, a vision of a better America that's within our reach, that's within our hands, if we just vote. If we elect two more senators, we keep the House and Democrats, we're going to get a lot of unfinished business we're going to get done. Folks, look, we'll codify Roe v. Wade. We'll ban, we'll ban assault weapons. We'll protect Social Security and Medicare. We'll pass universal pre-K. We'll restore the child care tax credit. We'll protect voting rights. We'll pass election reform and make no, make sure no one no one ever has the opportunity to steal an election again. So good on Biden for taking the lead on this. And here's to hoping that his having run out of patience for a party of fascist enablers isn't lost on the American people. Before you go, a couple things. First, if you want to support my work, the best way is to subscribe to this channel. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. And second, if you want to see and hear more from me, check out my website, BrianTylerCohen.com. That way you can get links to my podcast, merchandise, ways to donate to voting rights organizations, and so much more. The thumbnail is also right here on the screen, so go check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching.